Greetings, Mecky102. I'm going to talk to you now about uh, how to format an Excel sheet properly for printing, and that would also apply if you wanted to print to a PDF or save as a PDF. Um, I've got a, a spreadsheet here I created for numerical methods a few years ago that's got quite a few uh, rows of data and, and analyses. It is, if you're interested, a curve fit, a nonlinear least squared regression to some sample data from NIST. That's what all the, the dots are. And it was a um, dual Gaussian fit with a decaying baseline. So two, two Gaussian peaks with a decaying baseline, or so that had overall a, a decay to it. Fairly complex formula you can see in the top there with eight different parameters that were fit. In any event, just so if you want to know what this was about, let's say I wanted to print something here just to document kind of the, the basics of what's happening with the graph, the equation, some of these fit parameters, and the, and the, the sort of the characteristics of the fit, and a little bit of the data. Uh, I have a shortcut at the top in the quick access toolbar that does a print preview. So if I click on that, you can see what it does, even if I select instead of my home printer, let me select, uh, say, print to PDF. So that should be a default that comes up um, if you're using uh, Excel as the Microsoft Print to PDF. I'm not sure on the Mac, but hopefully there's something similar, some means to print to a PDF. Um, actually, let's see, I have print select. Say if you say print active sheets. So right now it's not really organized at all. What it's going to do is it's best to split up the entire set of cells that have stuff in them um, on as many pages as it takes. So you can see right now it starts at the top left. It gets some of the data table, some of the documentation, and then if you check down towards the bottom here, there's actually 13 pages this is going to print. If you go through all the pages, it's just page after page after page of numbers, then towards the bottom it squeezes in part of the graph, and then some blank stuff. And then at uh, the last page, the rest of the graph. So this obviously is not the, the way to go with this. Let's say that I want to instead decide exactly what's going to print here. So maybe I'll select what I want to see, um, whatever it is, and I'll just select this here. So I've got a, a rectangular sort of wider area than it is tall. So I'm, I'm thinking ahead, I'm going to print this as in a landscape. But nevertheless, right now, I'll select that. Again, if I did uh, my print preview here, what it would look like, and then I, had, I actually had this selected before when it first came up here. If you say print selection, you can decide just to print that smaller part. Now there's only three pages, but it's still, I have no control over how that's looking here. Um, even if I were to change it here to landscape orientation, it's a, probably a little better two pages, but still this is not what I want. I want to fit all this on one. So let me show you a way that I typically do this sort of thing. And when I'm done with a spreadsheet and I have some concept of how I want this to look uh, and to lay out here, I've gone to the page layout tab on the ribbon and I'm gonna go to where it says print area. And I'm gonna say set print area. Now you don't have to do this, uh, but I like doing it because this is what will by default print. So this saves me the step of saying by selection when I go into the print and say uh, print the selection. Um, if I just leave it as active sheets, it will print just this part unless I say otherwise. In fact, what's kind of interesting here, you might notice now that this area that I've selected is a named range print area. So you can always come back and select that and you can change it if you want. So now I'll just show you if I go once again to print preview and then I say print the active sheets, it still is just the two. So I haven't fixed anything yet per se, but at least I've showed you something I typically do in my sort of workflow for this. What we need to do is I'm going to go into page setup and in here on the very first one where it says page, it already is landscape because I had selected that already in the the uh, print preview, but if I hadn't done that, I could come in here and say landscape, and I'm gonna select this because I know just because of the shape of this, it's wider than it is tall, so that's gonna fit better in a landscape orientation. But the scaling is an important one. I'm gonna say fit to one page wide by one tall. Now, if you're gonna do this, because it took two pages before, that means by definition, you're gonna shrink stuff down and fit it on one page. So you do have to be careful here. Um, you shouldn't go wild and just you know cram everything you can onto one page just in order to do that. So sometimes it does take a little bit of a trial and error to figure out um, how you might change the shape of your graphs or maybe rearrange some things that, depending on what you want to fit on the page. Sometimes you may have to print a couple of pages 
um, in which case then you might actually select an area instead of doing the print uh, the uh, print area you might select one part say print that selection only and then do another part but in either case there you would still probably do this fit to one page wide by one page tall to start and I'll just hit OK right now. Actually, I'll do print preview from here and show you what this is going to do. It now squeezes all this onto just one page. So there is no more two pages all on one. This is what I was talking about, though, in, this, in terms of this being um, kind of small at this point. So maybe I might go back and knowing that maybe I would move my graph underneath here. And then maybe what I'll do instead is I'll do something like this. And then I'll redo the print area. Let me do a preview again. And in landscape, that looks much better. So this is pretty nice. This is still has my, my headings on the table, still has my formula and the results, has the graph. It's a pretty decent size. You can see that if this were to print, it would still be very legible. So I like this. I like this quite a bit. Uh, let me go back one more time. Other things you can do here, you can set the margins if you like. Right now, they're pretty small. Uh, I had probably set these, I don't know if these are standard ones or not, at the 0 0.75 and 0 0.7. You can make them a little wider if you want. Typically one inch is a common one. I might actually switch this to one inch all the way around and a header and foot or half an inch. Here you could do orientation. Here you could do size. I'm going to leave that. Obviously that's your standard 8.5 by 11. And you would select that whether you're doing landscape or portrait. That's just the basic size. Unless you have a printer that can do a bigger one. Okay. And then that is not what I wanted to click on. I wanted to click here and just show you there are even other things. You can do your margins in here. So in here on the margins tab, you can also do other things such as center horizontally and vertically if you like. I do that fairly often. You can also put a header and footer. So those are things that would print at the top in the, in the case of the header and at the bottom in the case of the footer on every page. You can change different odd and even, different first page, scale with documents. So some pretty neat things you can do in there. The sheet is more a matter of how it will actually organize things if it needs to do more than one. In this case, that doesn't apply because we're doing only one. But you can also decide if you want to print the grid lines, the row and column headings. I almost never do that sort of thing. Uh, and so forth. You can see the things that this does, that these, the things that these things do. Um, header and footer here. So maybe I'll put in the custom header. Maybe I'll put on the left side. I'll put my name. Um, I might put that this is Mickey 102 section. Uh, I'm in all sections, but I'll say, which did I write? Section one. And maybe I'll put today's date, which is October uh, 6, 2020. And I'll hit OK. And now when I hit print preview from here, you can see what it does. So put that information up there in the header, which looks pretty good. It has this thing. It's a little smaller than it was, I believe, because I made the margins larger and it squeezed that stuff at the top. But that's pretty good. If I were to print this now, uh, it would look just like that. If I hit print to, to PDF, uh, it would then make it, it actually come up like a tipping does, ask you to save it. The other thing you could do at this point is you could say save as, and you could do select all the way down here PDF, and I'll say save. And then let me minimize this and I'll open that up and you'll see what it looks like. There it is. So if I had printed it actually um, to the printer, it would come out physically like this. If it was you know, color printer, it had the colors. If I had said print to PDF, it would have looked like this. In this case, once you've done your page layout and all your other stuff that I showed you in terms of setting the print area, um, when you select save as PDF, it's essentially the same thing as printing to a PDF. There may be some differences in the, the look when it's finished, but I'm not really aware of any. Okay, so that's how you can do a pretty basic but pretty effective formatting of output from an Excel sheet to a PDF or to print in general to control the format. And by the way, these are settings that you can make. Um, certainly the, the print area from worksheet to worksheet I'm not sure if it, that's true with the page setup overall, but I believe it might be. You can experiment with that to see. Thanks for watching.